Tom. And I'm Michelle. And we're the Tom Foolery Fun Club. Welcome to another installment of Straight Out of Tom Foolery. Only this time it's a new series with celebrities. I'm excited. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But first of all, we want to wish everybody a very happy new year. Yes, happy new year. We are off to an awesome start for 2021. Is it happy? Yes. So far, been a little bit of a rocky start, we must say, but we're happy to get 2020 in the rearview mirror, are we not? Yes, hindsight is 2020. 21 has been a little rocky, as we say, but uh, hey, you know what? Uh, we've got nowhere to go but up. Yes, so we're excited that you're joining us today. Absolutely, and we have a, a little bit of a new spin on uh, Straight Out of Tom Foolery. Yes, we are going to be having celebrities join us. Well, you know, we've been doing these uh, podcasts now for, well, a couple of years, and um, we like to think that they're very uh, informative, help people to uh, get an idea as to what's coming up with the uh, Tom Foolery Fun Club, mm -hmm. and um, mildly entertaining, I would say, yeah, yes. depending on who you talk with. <laughs> uh, some wouldn't even give it mildly as a, a designation, but the fact of the matter is we have uh, built relationships with so many fine entertainers over the last seven years, yes. uh, comedians and musicians, and we decided to uh, incorporate the, the really talented people yes. into the uh, podcast. So we are inviting them at this moment to the laughter loft. And we're, we'll, we'll be welcoming someone uh, uh, very shortly, uh, actually today. And we'll also be um, intermingling some live performances into it, uh, yes. videotaped live performances into the, uh, into the podcast to kind of give yes. you an idea as to maybe what you've been missing if you haven't attended a Tom Full Refund Club event yet. Yes. And wait a minute now, let me, before you knock it, before you knock dating older men, let me tell you why it's a plus. If you date an older man, don't get him when he's like, his memory is totally gone. Just like when he can, cannot remember little stuff, you know what I'm saying, like little small stuff. Like, you know, when he wants to have sex, I pretend we already did it. <laughs> hell, hell, he don't remember. <clears throat> he comes to the bed, I'm like, oh my God, you were great. I said, but he said, but I said, no, we did it already, remember? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was Marcy, the one and only Deloney, at one of her recent performances with Tom Foolery at the Roxy Theater in Lockport, Illinois. And we're joined today by Marcy. Marcy, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Tom and Michelle. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. I appreciate it. Marcy, we've been so fortunate to, uh, to have you uh, as one of our featured comedians over the years. We, I, I can't even tell you how many times you've been with us. And one of the things that Tom Foolery prides itself in is, is bringing in new talent, a constant stream of, of new performers. Yes. But it never fails. Our loyalists always say, when's Marcy coming back? When's yes. she coming back? So yes, and um, that's a great segue because it's time for a race. <laughs> I've been here quite a bit. It's, it's race time. <laughs> Marcy, t uh, talk a little bit about your comedy. We, we'd just uh, like to get to know you a little bit more. Um, what are some of the things that have influenced you to become a stand-up comedian in the first place? How did you get involved in this? Well, you know, actually, um, I can say my comedy career began in, like, grade school. Um, the very first time, I think I was in the first grade, the teacher loved my addiction, you know, and the way that I spoke. So it started with speeches. Oh, okay. So I would get on stage, and, and it's like I was never nervous, you know, and then she, she liked the way that I could read and different things. And um, from that point on, I spent a lot of time either in the corner mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. or the principal's office or sitting right next to the teacher. So it began early. Okay. It began early. <laughs> so after and outside of the school arena and showing and showing your talents, what was sort of the way that you decided to do this in, in a stand-up way within shows and getting booked in shows? What made you sort of hit the, hit the, hit the ground running doing shows as a real stand-up comedian? Well, at work, I used to work for the university, people would stay at my cubicle and we would just be having conversations. And throughout the time I would hear people say, you should be a comedian, you should be a comedian, but I wasn't trying to be funny. This is just regular conversation. So uh, comedian, Chicago comedian, uh, producer Dave Odd, he used to have this, um, used to have this Friday night show. It was like a open mic and things okay. like that. And I had never been on stage in that capacity before. Okay. And one of my coworkers, I saw it. He, I saw, um, I saw an ad in the reader paper, Chicago mm -hmm. reader paper, Yes. you know, saying if you want to ever do stand up comedy. And so I told a coworker, I said, look at this. 
I said, but I'm scared. She said, I'll book you. And so she called and, you know, put me down for a Mm -hmm. spot. And I took first place. Had never, 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 had never been on stage in that capacity Mm -hmm. of that of a comedian. So, Marcy, tell me a little bit about your inspiration for your material. Well, uh, being black, (laughs) raising kids, being divorced, you know, married and divorced, Mm -hmm. and just things that I think that people think about, but they never really talk about it. Mm -hmm. I can make something funny out of something that's not funny. Right. You know, I believe that you can always find something beautiful if the whole thing is ugly, if Mm -hmm. you think hard enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in this time right now where there is a lot of, I guess, racial tension, right? But uh, you seem to have a way of uh, transcending the audience to to get us to kind of laugh at ourselves, right? Oh, yes. Um, Black and white. I have like a ton of black and white material because, I mean, in essence, we are with ourselves 24 hours a day. So as a black woman, I know what black people do because I'm black, you know, and I found out, uh, I find that in audiences, black people love to laugh at themselves. Mm. So why not try with white people? They like to laugh at themselves too, obviously, you know. Sometimes it comes off a little uncomfortable first, but when they realize that I go in as hard Mm. on black people because that's what I know, the whole room relaxes. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, you know, I love the suburbs, the suburbs of Illinois. I love them. You know, why, I'm going to tell you something. I'm looking forward to the summer because white people, you all have the best garage sales. <laughs> no, there's a, look, there's a difference between black people garage sales and white people garage sales. Case in point, I go to a white garage sale. I see a nice flat screen TV with the remote still attached, <laughs> batteries in it. And I say... That's a nice TV. How much do you want for that TV? Well, let's see. Harold, honey, she wants that television. He goes, honey, that's a $400 television. She goes, honey, just give me $30. There's no problem. Just give it to me. <laughs> Black people, same TV, no picture tube, <laughs> no remote. And they get it propped up against the garage door. <laughs> and I say, hey, I can get, take this TV and get it fixed. How much is that TV? Baby. Baby. How much for that TV? Well, we paid $400 for it. Well, how much do you want? $400. What you think this is? <laughs> you know, and then you get out there uh, uh, in the dating pool. And it's like, I did not know this existed, you know. I didn't know, you know, that you should, like, you know, put out on the first date. Nobody told me. (laughs) (laughs) Which way to swipe on that app, right? Yeah, you know, it's like, ooh, 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 you know. But So we get to the date, and he accuses me of catfishing. Anybody know what catfishing is up in here? Exactly. You already know. You get a picture that ain't really you. But, you know, it's something about those filters, you know, it's something about those filters. So when he saw me, he was like, oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. Ooh, you don't look nothing like your pictures. He said, you text me, and you told me that you had a bi- uh, your body was banging. I said, no, I had said my body was banged up. <laughs> he was like, no, you said that. You stay in the gym a lot. He, now, he's reading my text messages. And the one thing about text messages, ladies and gentlemen, you can't hear a text message. And you know, there's autocorrect. Autocorrect will do some stuff to you. He goes, you said that you were into, that you were in the gym seven days a week because you were a beast. I said, no, I said I was obese. <laughs> he said, look at you. You told me you were shaped like a Coke bottle. I said, a three liter. <laughs> He said, no, that's not what you said. He said, now listen, I know. You told me that you were athletic just like me. You told me you fought in a UFC. I said, no, I had meant KFC. Because they didn't get my order right. And uh, you you also like to joke around about your mom a little bit. Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I never thought 
at my age, I would really, I mean, I have like a complete set on my mother, yes. you know, because my mother, like many others, mom was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ruby Lee, Ruby Lee. <laughs> Ruby Lee Benson, baby. <laughs> you know, um, I talk about her because I find out the older I get, I understand her sense of humor. And um, I think if she were alive today, she would really be proud because I have her like, she should have been the comedian, you know, in our family. You know, she was just really hilarious. And to be able to reach back to those childhood moments, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like I have a lot of stuff to say now that I'm almost 50, you know, that I could, you know, easily clap back at her for some of the stuff she said to me. But, you know, a lot of times now kids are told, you know, parents are told, you know, you have to deal with your child's self-esteem. You have to make sure that they're, you know, that your children are, you know, spoken positively to. Not in our house. <laughs> Whatever came up came out. So, yeah. you know, that's why I'm dysfunctional at 50 almost. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, yeah. Oh, you better believe it, baby. My mama, my, listen, my mother smoked cigarettes, ladies and gentlemen. She had a cigarette in her mouth and never would break the ash. <laughs> ash this long. She had a deep voice like this. My mother drank. She had a small shot ga- glass behind a sugar bowl. And see, all this ADD stuff, it wouldn't have went well with her. They'd have been like, Miss Benson, you know, Marcy has ADD. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she won't have it on Monday. <laughs> and I would be the kind of kid, like the kids are today. They own that stuff. And my mother, I would say, Ma, I wait a minute. I got ADD. <sighs> I know, baby. That's why mama gonna whoop your ASS. <laughs> so, Marcy, what would you say is your most memorable moment in comedy so far? Good or bad? <laughs> Just memorable. Good or bad. What, what is like, well, you're I, like, oh, I'll never forget this. You know what? Okay. Now, I had just started out. You know, now this is the the crazy side. And I was hosting a birthday party. This is the very first paid job I got. I'm hosting this birthday party. And throughout the whole birthday party, I am calling the host the wrong name. <laughs> like the whole party. And everybody was like, hey, hey, hey. You know, every time I said his name... And then it didn't dawn on me that his name was like Billy Ray. I was calling him Gregory. Oh. <laughs> and they filmed it. This is a big birthday. This is like a major milestone. The yeah. golden years, as they call it. Golden mm-hmm. birthday. 50. And I will never forget that day once I realized that I had the wrong name. I would not have paid me. Uh. <laughs> now, I, I love asking this question to people because it really gives... Uh, people who might be aspiring to be a comedian some idea of what they need to do what advice would you give someone who was aspiring to be a comedian it's very simple what I always tell people because people always say you know people that I meet oh I they said I should be a comedian or I can do that easily but when you get in front of those people it is definitely not that easy you can be a table comedian right you know but it's something about getting in front of people I always say that Maybe you can study. Study different comedians that, you know, you may enjoy. Mm-hmm. But if you're real serious about it, I would say that you should go um, go to a couple of open mics. You know, go where nobody knows you. So if right. you bomb, nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Just don't go back to that spot, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, but you can also just go to, go to an open mic. Right. Get a feel for it, you know. But you have to get out amongst the, amongst the people you have to and if you can get and um, go to an open mic and you can relax and people are going to be worse than you mm-hmm. that's the way that i see it you right. know you won't be the only unfunny person there right so you would say study other comedians <laughs> that's it study write, other comedians and get write and get out to open mics mm-hmm. good advice great advice absolutely Marcy. now as we uh, we kind of work our way through covid mm-hmm. um sometimes people almost flippantly say you know how how are you making it through the pandemic? You know, how's, uh, are, you, are you navigating it your way through okay? Uh, but you have actually navigated your way through a, a pretty rough storm here. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Well, I have, the, I have the quarantine pounds, you know, to prove that I'm navigating pretty good. But, but seriously, um, 
I contracted COVID before COVID became cool, cool, right? <laughs> well known, so to speak, before it became famous. Uncool. Yeah. <laughs> I um, contract I uh, contracted it in March of 2020. Um, it to me, it was just like an asthma attack. It was like the worst one. So I had no reason to panic. You know, I had absolutely no reason to panic about anything. And um, I went to urgent care twice, emergency room once, went back to the emergency room, and that's when they kept me. They, they kept me for a couple of days, and they came and, uh, came and got me, and they asked me, did I know what COVID-19 was? I said, no, I don't. Well, you have it. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, the first thing I could think about, because I do have a family, I said, you know, I just have to ask one question. And that question is, am I going to die? Because, you know, we all think about how we're going to die at one point, but I didn't think it was going to be a nationwide pandemic. Right. And the doctor just looked at me and he said, you know, I'm not going to BS you. He said, uh, you're pretty sick. He said, and at, and at that time, the COVID had already um, had already taken over my lungs at that point, mm -hmm. at that point. He said, you're pretty sick and more than likely uh, you, will, you may pass. Mm -hmm. Do you have any family? So I can't even tell you guys mm -hmm. yeah. what I was thinking because everybody asks me, well, mm -hmm. what were you thinking at that moment? You know, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know how to process it because it was given the way it was given to me. Mm -hmm. And I only had of just a few minutes because they had told me that I would get on the, um, I, that they would put me on the, um, the ventilator. The ventilator. Right. They mm -hmm. told me they were going to put me on there, but then they said, "Do you have any family? You know, you have to let your family know." I mean, I mean, I didn't know if I should put in a mass text. Hey, everybody, I'm going to be, you know, leaving here soon. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we called my oldest daughter, Alexa. Called Alexa, and they had on speaker. And they were a lot um, kinder with delivering the news than they were to me. Mm. We're going to do everything we can for your mom. See, they didn't tell me that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it was like, is your life insurance up to date? No. But they didn't tell me that. Right. They said, you know, but your mother is relatively young. And uh, we're going to do everything that we can to save her. And so I have like two minutes mm. to say goodbye mm -hmm. to not the three children but to one. Right. And she was just like, you know, mommy, I love you. You know, and it, I'm sure it was very hard for her to have to tell the other two, you know. And um, I got off the phone and I just, I just sat there in the bed because I didn't know what to do, but I did know that my condition was getting worse. Right. And they told me they were going to, you know, put me on a ventilator. So they moved me to isolation. Mm. And they had a nurse sitting there um, just, like, prepping me and stuff right. for it with the IV mm -hmm. and stuff. And you know how in the hospital you can look out, like, outside of, the, you know, like if you were looking at a nursery or something like right, that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I remember watching the doctors get ready to put me under. Oh, okay. You know, I didn't know. All I knew was that I was going on this ventilator. I didn't know what would the outcome be, right. would they be able to, you know, uh, to save me in time, because the doctor also said that I had contracted pneumonia in both lungs okay. at this point. So I'm sitting there, and I look at my phone for the last time, and it's a prayer mm -hmm. from, my, from my mom, uh, Mother Deloney, and she, it's just like this long prayer, and that's the only thing I remember after that. Mm -hmm. And I begin to cough blood at that point. And the nurse says, oh, my goodness, let me hurry up and put you under, you know, because he could tell that I was in a lot of pain. Mm. And I stayed there for almost three weeks on that ventilator. You know, Michelle and I have been very fortunate uh, yes. over the last seven years uh, doing Tom Fuller. We've, we've benefited in, in so many ways. Uh, I mean, beyond the hundreds and hundreds of dollars that we've made doing shows over the last seven years, uh, we've just met some Amazing. fabulous people. Yes. Uh, comedians, musicians, and uh, you know we consider you to be one of our close personal friends, and, yes, and we absolutely yes. love you, and uh, we're glad you're here. Yeah. So, Marcy, now that you have given, been given a, a second chance at life, and and you're funnier than ever, um, what's next for you? What do you see as next, or what do you want to do next? It's a lot. Of, it's a lot I want to do. I know that I would love to. 
do some script writing, mm-hmm. just, you know, um, skits and stuff like that. I like to do some script writing, uh, which I think is one of my strongest points of comedy. You know, that's why I'm able to tell jokes on stage. I do what I write. Right. You know, um, I want to uh, I want to write some scripts. Um, I would love to at one point do a small mini camp for teens, you know, mm-hmm. aspiring comics and stuff like that to help them out, mm-hmm. you know, um, something like that. And I'd also like to do go more into the corporate world. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, um, I did the Greater Northwest Indiana Association of Realtors. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was big and it was great. Uh, and yeah. the check was ready. No, um, I be, you know, I want to do things like that on a grander scale because what I'm, I'm what I'm learning is that people really do want to laugh. Yes, I think people we need to, right? Yeah, they want to laugh. They need to laugh. And, you know, just to get out there to the masses, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not trying to go to Hollywood or anything like that. I just want to do what I do, get paid for it. And uh, if nothing else, just make somebody's day a little bit brighter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Marcy, thank you so much for joining us today. We sh- we greatly appreciate yeah. thank your you for presence having me. and you for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Tom Foolery. It's been a great seven years. Yes. I'm Tom. And I'm Michelle. And Marcy Deloney here. And we're the Tom Fullery Fun Club. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. 